This is an Emco Unimat 3. There are a couple of other videos um, on YouTube here uh, which show this lathe. But uh, the reason I wanted to do another video is just to show it fitted with variable speed motor drives, which I think is a marvellous addition. Uh, the Emco Unimat 3 and Unimat 4 are um, small lathes might be called micro lathes uh, in one book here which uh, mentions it but it's mostly about the Toyo 210 it's classed as a compact lathe uh, the original lathe comes with one of those mains motors and you have to swap the motor between the lathe operation and the milling operation it's similar in size to the uh, what's it called? SL, the Unimat SL lathe, which has got the round bars for the bed uh, and where you actually remove the headstock and attach it to the column in order to get the drilling operation. At least with the Unimat 3 and 4, you do get a separate uh, milling head on it. Uh, but you didn't originally get a separate motor. So what have we got in terms of variable speed motors? Well, let me just show you. There's the uh, box, which is the controller. There's a 24 volt power supply. That takes 24 volts DC in and gives 0 to 24 volts out. As you can see, it's turning quite slowly at the moment. But if I adjust the speed control you get a nice range of speeds continuously variable without having to change the belts over at all you've still got the uh, belts there if you did want to provide something else on there I'll just switch that off uh, this one's using the main motor on here is a larger scooter motor originally it was a 36 volt uh, 300 watt one but has been down rated uh, to be run at 24 volts uh, and it's approximately then 130 watts of uh, power from the motor and the motor attached there is from the smaller scooter the kids kid scooters they're 90 typically 90 or 100 watts at 24 volts and I could if uh, you want to plug that in uh, the lathe the other descriptions do show it. Uh, this is the one with the uh, chuck, which you use two Tommy bars. I've marked it there as M14. It's M14 by one pitch on the thread, on the uh, spindle nose, the tailstock nose. It's got a parallel shank to the, uh, that just fits into the tailstock to the headstock and tailstock, the same parallel shank at both ends and quite a generous hole. The hole doesn't go through all the way through on the tailstock but on the headstock it does so you can put longer materials in and you've got the same M14 uh, nose on the milling part, that's a, a slitting saw arbor that's screwed onto there temporarily and it will hopefully make sure it, if you are going to get one come with a T-nut with the M14 thread on that's screwed at the moment into the head of the column to keep it safe uh, because that allows you to attach this chuck onto the uh, cross slide if uh, if you want to uh, to hold things in there the alternative of course is a, a small machine vise so that's just to show one example of um, a modification to it to give it variable speed. Apart from the 24 volt DC power supply, and those are obtainable from lighting suppliers to drive LED lights in shops and offices and places like that. The other thing that you need is the speed controller, and the speed controller 
that uh, works fine is something like this. It's available from China uh, relatively cheaply and it will do quite a range of DC voltages 12 to 36 or 12 to 48 volts and give you the uh, variable speed output you just put the DC voltage in the DC voltage out there and uh, then you've got the variable speed uh, and off in this case uh, relatively low cost and depending on where you source your scooter motors from relatively low cost conversion you can get commercial com conversion as you'll see advertised on eBay uh, which is just ready to bolt on to the back plate in place of the original motor uh, which is one way to go but certainly uh, all this way is an alternative the disadvantage is unless you really do tidy it up you've got separate 24 volt power source your controller which could be a small box like this one I could glue a box like that onto there uh, that would be quite tidy uh, and you would need to fabricate up the motor mounts but as you can see uh, a thin well eighth steel plate you don't need to change the pulleys you just need it set at a suitable position so that one of the pulleys will drive this is just a one-to-one -one ratio between the motor pulley and the spindle on the milling head and similarly it's approximately one-to-one -one on there so there's an Emco Unimat 3 what I will do in a later video because it's very difficult when you see this full screen to get an idea of the size the um, Unimat 3 the Unimat 4 and the uh, SL are all approximately the same size and considerably smaller than other compact uh, or mini lathes. I'll just pull out a book. Just it's got a picture of some mini lathes on there. Uh, those mini lathes are quite a bit larger. You know, if you read the spec, you would know that, but it is useful to uh, uh, see something. Uh, so you can compare the size of this and just a quick run to show the milling head in operation um, Let's have a look Oops Plug it in And then I'm having to reach over to, to find the speed controller I'm not quite sure which direction I've got that running uh, As you can hear, it's uh, a reasonable, smooth running, quiet setup. And I think that's just the uh, tick from the belt. Yes, as you can see, there's uh, the join in the belt there. Uh, just makes a little tick as it goes around.